The best way to describe the watershed associated with Big Green Lake is if a drop of rain fell on a piece of ground and that piece of ground was shaped such that it would flow a certain way, the water that would fall on the land that would eventually end up in Green Lake represents about 110 square miles. 40% of it is in Fond du Lac County and the other 60% is in Green Lake County. In an average year, the lake takes in approximately 20,000 pounds of phosphorus. The runoff is coming into the lake through the tributaries that feed Big Green. As part of that runoff activity, we're trying to look at ways to reduce the amount of phosphorus that's coming into the lake. Already this year, in 2013, we've written eight grants, and out of those eight grants, we've raised, in effect, close to a million and a half dollars to be used toward these BMPs. Probably our strongest best management practice would be something called a sediment control basin. If you can picture a farm field as an example, and you pick out the low point of that field, and you excavate an area that acts as kind of a, a, a trapping basin, when you talk to most scientists, you'll hear phosphorus and sediment almost go hand in hand because the phosphorus attaches to the sediment. So that when you have a rain hitting that field, you want the sediment and the attached phosphorus to settle in that basin. And then after X number of years, you're going in and you're excavating out that sediment and associated phosphorus. We estimate that 80% of what runs off into Green Lake is coming off of agricultural land. There are also some short-term things that we're doing like the additional weed harvester. We applied for an AIS control grant. The AIS stands for Aquatic Invasive Species. So we're actually going to be introducing chemicals into the shallow water areas of the lake, Byers Cove, the Mill Pond, uh, Silver Creek. But the reason why they're effective is those aquatic invasive species come up, they're the first plants that come up in the spring, mm -hmm. and they actually bloom at colder water temperatures than the natives. It causes multiple problems because it creates a canopy on the water surface. It takes away light from plants that you want to grow, and that's why it's such a nasty invasive, if you will. So by timing our treatment, we can knock out the ones we want to take care of without harming the natives that we want to stay in place. In Silver Creek, we've revitalized that estuary. The water clarity used to be the same in Silver Creek that it was in the County K estuary. And it was basically under a foot. The Silver Creek estuary is now a very healthy fishery that supports all of Big Green Lake. It's a giant filtering device that's cleaning the water coming from Ripon and Down K. Those plants are fantastic for filtering out phosphorus. And everything about that project is a success, regardless of which scientist you want to talk to. People are surprised when I tell them you could put two Lake Genevas in Big Green Lake. They're surprised when they hear that in terms of water volume. So although it takes time to affect change, it also can be forgiving, but it can also make us a little bit complacent, and we need to be careful of that. I still think Big Green Lake is a beautiful lake. I still think it's the best lake in Wisconsin, but I just want to make sure that we all leave it better than we found it, and I think we're on the right path.